This is Sports Drive. Welcome back into Sports Drive, everybody. Joining us now, the head coach of the Headley Owls football team, Coach Lattermo. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time and coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, talk to me a little bit. Obviously, uh, you know, you had talked to, to us earlier this year, and I know some other people about the struggles that you guys have gone through in terms of, you know, fielding the team this season. So just talk to me about what that process has been like for you guys. Well, it's, it's been kind of challenging. Um, we went right up to two-a-days with only five, and gained one more. Um, there's only eight boys in the high school and six of them are playing football. So uh, we take it one day at a time. We have to you know, do a few things a little different. And uh, But scrimmages came out well. We're still healthy. So we're going to see what happens this Friday night. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, what, what was it kind of like in terms of for you in terms of, you know, just making sure that you guys did have enough players to where the conversations that you would have with some of the kids on the team now, convincing them, uh, you know, why they should play, those types of things that, that you guys were able to, to sit down and talk about as a team? Well, the good thing is, is uh, five of the six players that we had, they were here every day, uh, right up until two a days. And, uh, once two a day started, they were all here and we were talking to a couple of kids, trying to convince them. And uh, one kid, he wanted to play, just wasn't sure uh, if he was going to be able to go to school with us or not. Uh, and it turns out he can. So it made six and here we go. And, you know, for you, I mean, how how great was it to, to re realize and, and get to that point where you realized you were going to be able to field the team this season? I imagine. It must have been a little bit stressful knowing that you had kids that wanted to play, you had kids that wanted to, to you know, have that, that high school football season, knowing that, uh, you know, it, it might not happen. You might not be able to get enough players. So what was it like just uh, to, to get to that point of knowing, okay, we're going to be we're going to be ready to go this season? Oh, it was a big weight off our shoulders. But the, the neat thing was, was these kids are so dedicated that uh, they were even talking to the girls saying, hey, if we could just get one of you to suit up and, and do the kickoff with us, and then you can get off the field and we'll play with five. We just want to play. Yeah. And uh, it didn't come down to that. But we were, as far as asking girls, to, they could just do the kickoff with us and so we could just play. And uh, But like I said, luckily we got another boy and uh, we're good to go, at least for right now. And hopefully, barring no injuries or anything, we can play the whole season with just six. What would that have meant for, not just for you guys, but, you know, for the district as a whole? Obviously, you know, there's been situations. I know there's, a, you know, another district uh, in the area in 2A where Booker, you know, dropped out. They went to six-man, so uh, they're kind of, uh, I forget what the term for it is, uh, you know. Uh, uh, outlaw? This, outlaw, yeah, outlaw. That's the term I was looking for. But, uh, you know, so they're kind of doing that this season. And, you know, that affected the district a little bit. Obviously, that decision was made. Um, you know, a few months ago. So, w what was it going to be like for you guys? You know, if it came down to that, and and what would that, uh, what would that have, how would that have impacted, um, not just Headley, but you know, the district as a whole? Well, you know, there's only five teams, and so you knock one out, and everybody loses a game, and you know, you already have one open date scheduled uh, throughout those ten games in the season, and now you throw a second one in, especially that late in the season. Uh, the one that it would really hurt the most. Would for us, I would think, would be Silverton because we play them the last game of the year, and if we can't play, now they have an open date going into the playoffs, and it could, you know, mess up their – if they have any type of rhythm going on, you know, they could throw off their rhythm and really hurt our district. So we're trying really, really hard to at least uh, play in district so that, you know, these other teams – uh, can can continue to play, but we're also going to try to fight for that district title too. I know we only have six, but I have six fairly good players, and uh, we're going we're going to fight somebody for tooth and nail for that for that playoff spot. And what are the challenges just in terms of, of stamina of you know just having six players and and how that is something I imagine you guys are, are focused on a lot heading into the season. Well, we're. Um, you know, there for a while during two days, we only had like four of those 10 days where we had all six players. Um, and uh, now we do have all six every day, but uh, we've gone through the two scrimmages and, and my kids have been really, really worn out with just limited playing time, but they're building their stamina. Um, we work in the heat every day. I, we make sure we take lots of water breaks and things, but we're right in the heat of the day during practice. So they're, they're sweating a lot, they're running a lot, and uh, they're still not there. Nothing matches gameplay, though, like 
playing the actual game. So through two scrimmages, I've been really impressed with their stamina is getting better. But you're right, like especially early in this season, if we got games that go into the third and fourth quarter, then you know where's our stamina going to be? And hopefully uh, we have enough to finish. But, you know, as the season goes on, by the time we get to district, I think this, we don't have to worry about stamina by then. I wouldn't think. And, you know, I'm curious, too, you talk about the idea of, you know, playing with, with five, uh, you know, that some, being something they talked about if they could get, you know, one of the girls to join the team and, and be on the kickoff and everything like that. Um, you know, assuming, you know, who, you know, you never know what can happen during the course of the season, all types of things that can happen, uh, you know, during, uh, during that period of time. You hope, you know, everybody stays healthy and everything like that. But what are kind of the rules, if you guys were forced to, of playing with five players from, you know, the, the UIL and, and the kind of restrictions that, uh, kind of get placed on you guys in terms of, you know, making sure you have everybody out there every game? Well, what they what they tell us, uh, and I've checked into it because I've had to do this once before at, at another school, but as long, you have to start the game with six. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to start with six. So, But once, once somebody, let's say you come down, you start with six, somebody gets hurt, you can still play with five. Yeah. So our feeling is we start with six if need be, and one – the girl steps off, um, and then we just play till we as long as we can. I know that I did have a game one time where we did start with six, um, and that's all I had. And one kid got hurt, so we were down to five. And about halfway through the third quarter, another kid got hurt. And then what the UIL says then when you're down to four is it's suspended, which technically means it's a forfeit because when are you going to have time to make up that game? You're really not. So – so it's one you can play till you get to four, and then once you get to four, then then it's over. And coach, just one final question for you, real quick. Just talk to me about you know starting the season up. Obviously, you guys uh, you know play. You mentioned the the other four teams in your district. Uh, you know, Groom being one of those teams is very talented teams in the district. Just what do you make of of the competition you guys are set to face this year? Well, I know Silverton's going to be really strong. I mean, they still have Francis coming back and Groom, although they lost their playmaker, there's still lots of talent left on that team. LaForce brings back most of their team. And, you know, we only beat them by two uh, last year um, late in the game. But there again, there were some circumstances on my side, too, where half my team didn't play for the first half for disciplinary reasons. But they're still a good team. And they're still very capable of, of, of doing well. And, and there's that, even with a new coach this year, I believe they're going to be, with another year of experience, going to be a little bit tougher. So our district's pretty solid. And if you don't come to play every night, um, there is no easy team in our district. Well, Coach Lottermilk, thanks so much. We appreciate you stopping by. Once again, Head Coach Lottermilk of the Headley Owls. Enjoyed the, talking to you, Coach. We hope to talk to you again soon. Come out, see the team more uh, as you guys get rolling this season. And uh, that will be it for this segment of Sports Drive. We'll be right back to wrap things up after the break.